I'm going to talk to you today about dealing with a control freak. Do you have anybody in your life that is a control freak that constantly tries to control you and control circumstances, control the environment? Well, if you do, these are going to be really helpful tips. The first one is to remember that control freaks control because they feel out of control within themselves. They feel anxious and they feel uh, upset and they feel like things are just spiraling. So they have to externally try to control people and places and things in order to try to contain that inner turmoil. So it's really helpful if you look at the control freak and you think, wow, you don't have it all together. You're trying to control me because you're falling apart. And you feel like if you control me or control the house or control everybody's actions, that you won't fall apart. And that makes it feel a little less personal and a little bit less attacking and maybe even gives you a little bit of empathy toward that person. The second one is to decide what you're willing to do and let the rest go. You don't have to do everything a control freak demands you do. You can decide that you don't take on that anxiety. You can let the control freak clean the house the way that he wants it done or she wants it done. And you do it the way that you want it done. Or you can let the control freak get anxious like the person is anxious and pushing everybody and just stay calm and do your thing the way you're doing your thing. You don't have to go along with everything. You don't got to take on the same anxiety that the control freak has. The next one is when you decide to comply with anything the control freak has asked you to do, own it. Don't blame. Don't say, oh, all this controlling person demanded that I do this. I had no choice. Oh, no, 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 no. You always, always have the right to say yes or to say no. If you say yes, it's yours, baby. You own it. You don't say, oh, I had to do this. Uh-uh. Nope. You own it. It is so good and so healthy for you to take 100% ownership. So don't blame it on the control freak. You choose. Sometimes it's not worth arguing. It's not worth fighting. It's not worth the fallout that comes from you saying no. Sometimes it's easier to go along and it's no big deal and it doesn't hurt anything. Just own it. The next one is when criticized by the control freak, don't defend yourself. Don't give this long explanation and argue and get the control freak, you know, to agree with you. Just say, hey, thanks for your opinion. I'll think about that. Thanks for sharing how that affects you. Thanks for letting me know what you think. This will affirm what the control freak has said, but give you a chance to stay separate from it and choose how you think about it and how you perceive it and what you um, are feeling about the situation. Now, when the controlling becomes abusive or unbearable at any point, then you have a right to say, time out, no. This is not okay. This is going beyond your anxiety that you're trying to put on me. This is going into another level. It's going into a level that's demeaning or abusive or destructive or toxic, and you can set boundaries with that in any, at any time, in any situation. Um, and then the next one is to control, to detach from the control freaks' moods. Okay, control freaks have moods. They're pouty, they're pushy, they're demanding, they're intense, they're arrogant, maybe they're, um, <clears throat> let's see, they're uh, sulking, whatever it is when you are dealing with the control freak, when that mood comes out, you look at them and you say, whoa, you're in a mood. Uh, it's not about me. It's not something I did. It's not my fault. It's not my responsibility to fix it. It's your stuff, your mood. The other person gets to be in whatever mood he or she chooses. That's that person's right. You don't have a right to tell that person. You can't pout. You can't sulk. You can't be angry. That person can do that if, if he wants to or she wants to. So what you basically need to do is to detach from those moods. Hey, that belongs to that other person. I don't want to feel that way. I'm not mad. I'm not upset. I'm not anxious. I'm not worried. So I feel under control. Then you let the other person have their own mood. 
And then the last one is that control freaks often use tones of voice that are demeaning, that are authoritarian, and telling you, do this, do that, that are inappropriate for an adult-to-adult -adult relationship, or maybe inappropriate for a marriage relationship, inappropriate for an adult a child to have an adult parent speak or a parent speak to them that way. So when the control freak uses a tone of voice that's not okay, you basically say, could you please ask me in a different tone of voice? That lets the control freak, control freak know that you're okay with the request, you just don't like the way that it was said. So you're giving that person feedback that lets them know that they can change their tone and get what they want done without having to use that tone. Okay, so these seven things will really help you if you use these in a relationship with a control freak. Thank you for watching Change My Relationship. I hope that this video was really helpful to you.